Hello everyone, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. We're here outside St. James Park as I just left the Theatre Royal. The matinee show has been done. Tonight we have another show at 7.30. Uh, that'll be the second, third show so far this week. Six shows in total. You can check out Jerry and Sewell, the play based on Purely Belta at the Theatre Royal this week. Friday at 7.30, Saturday a matinee show, and then Saturday the final show at 7.30. It's been absolutely unreal so far. Been a class, class show. I'm telling you, you all love it. So check out the ticket link in the description if you just fancy it. If you can get any, it's nearly sold out. Last night, the open night was incredible. But anyways, we're outside St James Park because all the discussion today has been about: is this place going to get redeveloped, or is this going to be no more? And will there be a brand new St James Park by the Saudi owners, PIF? We're going to talk all about that and more when we get to home. Because it's freezing here, and I haven't got any of the proper equipment. So let's get home and discuss it further and what the club have said about the future of St. James Park. Right then, people, we are here back home now to go through this article on Newcastle United's website. Official statement from our CEO on the future of the stadium, St. James's Park, new one or an extension. I'm going to talk my thoughts on it after we'll just go through the actual information officially released by the club. It's, it's a big one. There's lots into it. And I'll give my opinion, like I say, and let me know what you make of it in the comments below. But as I've said all along, for years now since the takeover, I expect a new stadium. And for me, this hints towards a new one massively by some of the points made. I've only had a very brief read-through, like I said, I've been chucker all day in the theatre. We've done one show. As I do this video, edit it, and then upload it, we're back straight to the Theatre Royal for tonight's show. So... It's a chaotic, busy one, so please do give this one a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And like I say, check out Jerry and Sewell. It's class. We're still on for another couple of days at the Theatre Royal. But towards the stadium info, like, like I say, I haven't even read it fully yet. Just bits and pieces. But the Newcastle United Fan Advisory Board has taken place between them and the senior club executives discussing what's going on with the future of St. James Park. Brad Miller, our Chief Commercial Officer, Peter Silverstone, another... Uh, representatives from the club and communications have been in touch and in dialogue with the fan board about what's happening next. So, Brad Miller has delivered an in-depth update of the club's stadium feasibility work, which has obviously been going on for two and a half years now. Um, as part of a comprehensive presentation, he has outlined that we are entering a crucial second phase. So the first phase is now done, two and a half years. Second phase is underway. More detailed analysis is already taking place as we speak and they are investigating project related risks and opportunities before a decision is made in early 2025 so early 2025 we're only a couple of months away now mental that we're in october dark nights already minging not long until we find out the future of our new stadium or if we're going to extend it brad said this exciting opportunity extremely complex project i'd like to thank supporters for their patience hi <laughs> i tell you what <laughs> we wait a while for this one bradley uh, during the feasibility process, now I'm joking because I know I know that uh, there's actually been loads of problems going on behind the scenes, loads of stuff going on with the council. It's been a nightmare for everyone involved. So, yeah, just lightly taking the mic there. It actually has been very, very tough for everyone to try and sort this out. We aren't quite at a decision-making stage yet, but we are told in the early 2025 to complete the next essential tasks. We know that a transformed St. James Park would give us... So again, here we go, right? We're getting to some really juicy parts here and you need to listen to this carefully and maybe read between the lines. We know what a transformed St. James Park would give us and now have a significant amount of data and feedback on our stadium footprint and surrounding area so we are several steps forward. Also clear that this option has several risks associated with it so we need to fully analyse those risks against the opportunities to reach truly informed and intelligent outcomes. Briefly on those two statements. First of all, talking about a transformational St. James Park, amount of data and feedback, surrounding area. That kind of sounds like they were looking at extending it. The initial goal, aim, was to extend it by 10, 12,000, whatever it may be, but the amount of problems they're getting with that, we know the East Stand, Great List of Buildings, we know the Gallagher, the Road to the Hospital, currently got stacked there now as well. So there's been stumbling blocks there, as I mentioned as well, off the record stuff, like, council problems and all sorts dealing with loads of different authorities and figures on issues has been a real stumbling block as he said there's several risks associated with it and um against the opportunities and you know i will just slide away from this briefly news came out the last couple of days from the telegraph 
saying that it was going to cost £1 billion to extend St. James Park. £1 billion to add on 8,000 seats. That's that's completely illogical. It doesn't make any sense doing that. Adding on 8,000 seats for a cost of a billion. That is not a transformative process. That is not a once-in-a-generational check, which we'll get to in a minute. As I've said previously, once-in-a-lifetime funding for this type of thing. You know, the Saudis are willing to do it, but they want it to be a one-off. They don't want it to be regretting this in years to come. So 8,000 seats for a billion pound is not going to be a good return of investment. It's not going to make a generational, influential impact on anything, to be honest with you. What you said next then? The challenging our appointed design team and ourselves to make sure our eventual chosen route delivers a fantastic fan experience, one that represents this fans, city, region and the club and aligns with the long-term ambitions of the ownership group. We know Yassi Al Ramian on that documentary said we intend to be number one in world football. Do you get there by having 60-odd thousand seat at stadium? If you upgrade St. James from 52 to 60, 62? You don't really. Everyone's got that many seats now. We've actually got the 10th lowest nearly in the country for stadiums. We used to be the third highest back in the early 2000s. West Ham and everyone above us now. Leeds are even going to be above us with their extension. Leeds United, creating a championship, are going to have a bigger stadium than Newcastle as they've announced plans to extend Ellen Road. But it must provide an investable return and not least deliver strong revenue growth to increase our PSR headroom, which as everyone knows, means we can invest more in football. Like I said, since the takeover, I've been saying the Saudis are going to want a brand new shiny stadium. I did a deadline day live stream, disappointed at not signing anyone, and I said this is not going to change until we get a new stadium because of PSR. We can't generate massive income, especially if we can't get new highly you know, invested sponsors where they go up loads per year. A stadium is a way to do that because if you look at what Tottenham Hotspur and their stadium make in comparison to Newcastle United on our match day revenue, it is worlds apart. It is massive, massive differences in financial game, which then results in PSR, financial fair play, buying and selling players. So with a new stadium, 80,000 seater, the amount of extra money per match day, the amount of money on other things, concerts, NFL, fucking Harlem Globe Trotters coming to tune, you name it, we'll be doing it. That helps with FFP. Another 8,000 at St. James's isn't going to make a dent in anyone's pockets. This is a once in a generation investment. We don't want to look back in years to come as a club or a city and regret an opportunity missed. Bingo. There's a huge statement, people. If you think that any part of that sentence means upgrading St. James's Park by 10,000 seats, you're off your tits. Because there's nothing in that sentence that means that it's worthwhile. Once in a generation investment, again, once in a generation on improving St. James's, the current one, nope. We don't want to look back in years and regret it as an opportunity missed. Regret an opportunity to build a brand new massive stadium is what he's on about and not waste millions, billions on just extend the current one. That's what I take away from that. It really is. Let me know what you think in the comments. I haven't got all day to talk about this. Got to get back to the theatre if I haven't mentioned it already. So we'll, we'll breeze through it and maybe touch on it next week in the podcast maybe. Okay, what else have we got? Talks about fire experiences, bringing in more revenue, investment in football. We don't want to repeat everything you said. I think that's about enough, really. We can finish on that strong statement because that tells you, for me, everything you need to know and everything does point towards that brand new stadium. It really does, people. It's not going to be enough of a change. It's like seeing St. James Park. It's not going to hit financially that well. And when you look at the other night, Wimbledon, you know, Wimbledon in round three of a Carabao Cup on a Tuesday night with one week's notice, and the stadium was sold out. It looked sold out to me. I don't know what the official figures was. I was at the game, obviously. You would have seen. But level seven was trucker. Everywhere else was trucker. So it looked like there was 52,000 there for me. Even if it was close, 48, whatever. A week's notice against the League Two side. Putting another 10,000 seats at St. James Park, bringing it at 62,000. It's not enough. You can, I've been telling you, I get grief for this. Newcastle fans, especially other fans of, of other clubs, tell me, oh, who do you think you are? I think you can sell out 80,000. I'm, I'm telling you now. We can sell out 80,000 and I'll stick by it. 80,000 easily. You're telling me we couldn't sit, like sell another 20,000 season tickets, take it up to 70, 75,000 and then sell another few thousand on general sale, member sale. Easily 80,000. And that extra 30,000 seats, man. 30,000 match day tickets, 30,000 memberships, 30,000 pies in a pint in a programme on a match day. That is monumental difference. That's once in a lifetime. That is impactful. That is what is going to happen. Said it all along. But that's what I look like and that's what I think it seems to be. 
and maybe we'll get there we'll see in early 2025 there is loads more to discuss on this where does it go that's the issue isn't it where do we play during the meantime you know the, the best thing is Leeser's Park if you can shift St James a little bit or we'll knock it down then we'll do it just behind there I've done loads of videos on this beauty you can go back and watch them for locations and, and my thoughts on it and stuff in an ideal world to summarise it would be best if we could get St James to 70,000 we can't because of surrounding areas so for me we have to build a new stadium we have to move on history's there great heritage is there brilliant I've been to my first game at St James's as a young and unreal memories very special now to say we can't make new memories in a new stadium and hopefully actually win a trophy for a change yes I've seen we play European football UEFA Cup and apology Champions League last year you know unbelievable nights but those can still come and when how good our fans are how good war flags is the atmosphere we can do that in a new stadium, man. We can. So the only worry for me is the location wise. If we can't do it at Leeser's Park, can't do it in town, I don't want to be moving to you know a, a random field at Newcastle Racecourse, a random field in Gosfaf, fucking Northumberland, Dan Burns House in Blythe. No. Do you know what I mean? But we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what they come out with. That will be early next year. Let me know what you think in the comments, people. What have you read from that statement? What do you think is gonna happen? And what would you like to happen? Cheers. Jerry and Sue tonight. Another show to do. Check it out if you fancy it. Theatre Royal for the next few days. Take a link will be in the description. It is an unbelievable show. War flags, speaking to them. They are there. We've been raising the flags every night. The cast is brilliant. The show is class. It's amazing crack. There's loads of Steve Bruce slander and Mike Ashley insults in there. What's not to love? You will love it. But the, the tickets are very limited. So, shout out everyone as well last night, by the way. Open night. The reception I got when I went on the stage. Just blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. Thanks very much. I was just totally overwhelmed. Still am. So thanks so much for that. Everyone that's tuned out so far. And uh, looking forward to the rest of the, the week and the show. That's there. And then obviously Everton on, on Saturday night as well. I will luckily just about maybe be able to watch that. Or at least the first hour. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, the match you actually might have to come on Sunday for that one. But that'll do for me, people. Hope you're having a good week. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one.